we would like to introduce Mr. Buddy Hill and Check Diallo to the New Orleans Pelicans. I can't say enough how excited we are to add these two high character gentlemen to our organization. Um, I'll start with Buddy. Uh, you know, when we went to the draft, we had targeted certain guys, and um, Buddy had a tremendous college career, and we were looking forward to bringing him here, integrating him into our program, and we think that. As with all rookies, there's going to be a learning curve, but we, we're really excited to have him aboard. Um, Check is another guy that we, we, we were just excited that we got the opportunity to get him. Um, we traded two picks to move up in a draft to acquire him, and we're just excited to, to, to add both players to the program. And so now you know, we'll open up for questions for you guys to ask the players. Uh, just being a great teammate, of course. Uh, uh, God can spread the floor, space the floor for guys like me because uh, he's so special the way he does things. Man, he can play both ways, score the ball in a variety of ways. He can pick and pop, you know, paste up, post up. So just spreading the floor and uh, making life easy for Anthony on the court. Hey, man, what, was, what was key for you, the way you improved every year at Oklahoma? Just attacking my workouts each and every day and being mentally in focus and Working on the things I get to work on to get better on the court, and just watching all the film, and looking at my looking at my mistakes. In, in the reports of your workouts, they were, you know, that you were hitting 80 something three pointers in Boston. And um, did you feel like that you would go higher, or is this really the place that you wanted to be being at the, uh, from your meetings with the Pelicans? Is this where you wanted to be? To be honest, uh, we know we were stuck in that three to six range, and. Uh, you know, so when uh, the Pelicans organization and uh, Mr. Dems and uh, Coach Gentry came down to to Anaheim and watched me work out, you know, the the way they were, it, it felt like family already. The way they connected with us, you know, how they connected with me and Rob, you know, it felt like this was like one of, one of my other teammates I was talking to. And uh, when I work out, the workouts were serious, but after workouts, you know, we were just joking around. So I felt like family and I felt well connected. So I felt comfortable and I tell Rob, man, that's the place I love to go to. So. Uh, it was the, the, per, the perfect fit, but uh, so I'm just glad I'm here now. Jeff, what was your reaction last night uh, as, as everything was kind of going and got into the second round? You heard that they traded up uh, to, to get you. What was your interaction with, with these guys? What was your reaction to, to ending up in New Orleans? I mean, time, time my name got a call, I was like, uh, wow, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to kill first. And after, like, some people keep texting me, oh, shake, you know, you're going to uh, New Orleans. I was like, uh, okay. So <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm not going there. So I said, okay, because they all trade two people to get me. So I wanna do anything to make it all look good too. So I, I wanna work hard every day, go hundred percent every workout. So I'm, I don't wanna take a day off because they all fight something for me. So I have to give it something back. Had you met Coach Gentry or Dell before? Did they talk to you any contact at all? Oh yeah, in Chicago. In Kama, yes, I met, I met them. We talk a little bit. Yeah. The level of skill that you showed in Kansas in limited minutes, do you feel like you didn't really get to put all your skills on display and that came out more in the workouts in Chicago and that's why uh, you, you're a good fit here? Basically, in, in Kansas, I didn't play a lot of time but because I was late. But I, I saw everybody in Kama, I can play. So that's why people be surrounding me. Okay, say, we can draft you, you know. Because a lot of people fighting. Okay, say, we want to draft you, this team, this team. I always hope I can go like a first round, but I didn't go there. So I, I think that's a great fit for me here. So I'm so excited to be here. I see Anthony's here. Has he talked to you all about expectations or things to expect? No, we, we haven't really got touch base, but uh, yeah. no, but uh, I'm willing to learn and, and uh, pick his brain a little bit. He's been in the league four years now, so uh, he's well experienced. He's top five player in the league. He's soon to be MVP, so I'm just waiting to learn from guys like Anthony. And, uh, 
fall asleep. It's the same thing me too. So I just want to learn from like an old player on the team to be surrounded with them to know like how system work here and how they are treated like a wiki here. So I just want to close all all my team here. How do you feel about um, staying in school four years and making that progress each season? Do you feel maturity wise? You you ready for this level from all what you experienced? Yes, sir. No, no doubt. Uh, I feel like it was, you know, staying four years helped me. You know, you know if I could have left early, I could have left early. Something I want to do. But I feel like, you know, just being four years under Coach Cooper, I had a great coach and uh, great coaching staff, and I was able to learn and watch film and uh, learn from my mistakes each every each and every year. And my junior year, when I came into my senior year, I just attacked all my workouts and just more mentally focused and that's saying this now or never. So I had to make that jump. But how did can you just? Uh Describe how you came to basketball in the Bahamas, uh, how you came to be in the United States, and, and then what that whole experience has kind of meant to you uh, coming from the Bahamas to be here. Oh, I just started, you know, I started running track as a kid. I was loving track, but after I started watching basketball, I fell in love with Kobe Bryant, and uh, I stopped building my own courts and my great courts. I know y'all had a story, and a uh, guy named Coach Kyle instead, you know, gave me the opportunity to come to America and play. And after Coach uh, Crutch, assistant at Oklahoma, he saw me playing at, and uh, the showcase in the Bahamas. And uh, I just went to Oklahoma because I feel like it was the perfect fit for me. And the up and down tempo, you know, they, they they run the offense. And uh, the same way, coach, when I'm talking to Coach Entry, they want to play fast. So uh, it's a perfect system for me. What, what does it mean to you to kind of represent the Bahamas here and, and, and in the draft and the whole thing? It means a lot. You know, this, this will happen. This is nothing known back home, and I see a guy from the Bahamas in the draft every year, and know, maybe once every 15, 20 years. So uh, I'm just glad to be blessed, and I thank God for every opportunity to bless me and my family with. You know, I just, you know, I just use that for motivation. Uh, I'm going to continue to work to be the best I can be. Shake is uh, playing in this tempo, the up tempo system that the Pelicans have. Do you think that gives you an opportunity to play while you refine your skills because of the athleticism that you have? So basically, yes, I know. Because I just want to keep fighting, you know. Because a lot of people doubt me. Okay, you can't play because it can can stuff. So now I don't really care about what whatever has happened before. So I just want to keep moving forward and keep working hard. But have you all talked much about that triple overtime game? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about that. One. I just that was not no, no, we're not talking about that. One. I just tell my mom, and he's still a Jayhawk <laughs> in heart. So I don't know. If he thank God he's my teammate now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was, it was fun. Uh, I was up and down, tired, fatiguing, but uh, all the guys when I was fighting, they're hard tough for the team, so they're trying to get a win. What about you? What do you remember about it? I mean, I was in a band, so I was like, wow. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm honest, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a bench, I was like, I was like, wow, that number 24 is good, but I don't, I don't know what doing. I was like, wow. I'm kind of sure, you know. Somebody, somebody needs to stop here. I'm like, you from Bahamas? I'm like, okay. I was getting bucketed everywhere. I was like, wow. How, how important is it for you all when they talk about character guys and everybody talks about how valuable you've been off the court at Oklahoma and everybody talks about character? How much does that mean to you? And how much responsibility do you feel when you hear people talk about not only you all as a player but also as a man? I feel like, you know, being good character guys, you know, you set an example for little kids, you know, uh, Obviously, we, that shows that we're being raised up right, and uh, we have good people around us, like my mom and my brothers and sisters, and uh, all my family members around me. So I just use that to stay humble with it, and uh, just hopefully, uh, little kids can like look at us, look at us as examples. To me, I don't have like my family here, but they're all, they're watching me over here. But one day, I want to bring them here. So I have a, like a good people surrounding here. I have my legal guardian and I have my agent Bill Duffy. So I think I have a nice people surrounding me. But your last experience in Louisiana was a pretty good one. Yeah. You played LSU and you made seven out of eight three pointers in the second half for a very big win for your team at the time. So uh, you know, being back in Louisiana now, uh, are, how much do you, are you looking forward to embracing that experience of being in the state? I'm um, look, really looking forward to it. You know, I just, as soon as I came off the plane and uh, I felt hot and I reminded me of home. So, uh, I know it's, it's the same feeling, you know, this feeling I'm used to. And uh, I just want to make a big impression on the fan. I hear the fans are great down here and I just can't wait to connect with them. And uh, I'm excited. 
excited for the first game and uh, when we get to play in front of them. So I just here playing for the fans and I'm gonna give them my best and my all and uh, uh, start a new legacy here. Shaq, are you eager to kind of prove to people that that you know what happened at Kansas is kind of behind you and that you know where you were last summer is, is the kind of player that you, that you are? Yes, uh, I mean. I do be proving people wrong a little bit, but that's not enough. Uh, sometimes season start, I have to prove that people was wrong. But a lot of people doubt me, okay, he was not playing Kennedy because he was not good enough. So I have to prove them wrong because I know people doesn't know who I am. People doesn't know like, like what, what kind of thing I able to do. People just say, okay, he can not play because he started basketball in 2010. That's not mean anything because he can start basketball even three years or five years. That's not mean anything. So. I mean, I'm I'm so I'm so happy to be here, but people doesn't know who I am. They all keep saying I have a lot of opportunity to do it, so I want to do anything to get better. Anything in life, if it make me better, my coach, my teammate, anything. I just want to learn from everybody. I guess your role will kind of be determined by some of the guys around you. But uh, is there any way or any place you feel more comfortable? Anything that you do uh, well that you feel like that's what you do at this point? About game stuff or yeah, general? just like on the court. And of course, you know, I just do three things the best. I just want to just focus on my, my main thing. I don't want to try to do different things because that doesn't want me to do. I just want to listen to whatever they want me to do. That's what I'm doing. Just a block shot, rebound, and run the floor. So that's, that's three things I do best. What, how do you see yourself fitting in this system? Do you see yourself as a three-point threat? Do you see yourself playing off the ball and attacking the basket? Do you, as Coach said, making you into a complete player? You see a lot of advantages in the offense here? Yes, I see a lot of advantages. You know, playing with a superstar like Anthony, you know, uh, and a three point threat like me, you know, it's kind of hard to pick your poisons, you know. And, uh, you know, if he's work, operating the post and uh, guys can't double him, you know, he more room for him to operate. And, uh, comfort skin roll, and his ability to pick and pop and catch a shoot, I feel like that spreads the floor for everybody. So it does whatever coach needs me to do. And uh, I'm going to be here all summer working on my game, so uh, watching a lot of film. So I like the coaching staff mindset, what they're trying to do with me. And the better team. At what point did you think about the NBA as a it's like a real possibility? What age were you when you started to think that you could you could play in the league? When I start watching it, <laughs> at least twelve. <laughs> when I start watching it, because uh, I love the game, love the hype around it, the atmosphere, the momentum's, you know, the crowd going crazy back and forth when you're on the road, hostile environments. I just want to be a part of it. So even even when you weren't necessarily you know a really high profile recruit. Um, and by the way, I'm Brett Martel with AP. Even when you, even, even when you, uh, even then, you still felt like it was a realistic thing to yeah. go through college and end up in the, you know, the first round draft pick. I mean, I came over here when I was 17, so my head in Bahamas, our head always big. We always think the big picture. So uh, I always had the confidence, to know I was going to make it. Nobody didn't know about me yet, but I know inside of myself that I was. <laughs> I'm still going to open up eyes every time somebody watched me play. So I was not scared in the moment. So, not, so every time I got an opportunity, I embraced it. Coach Kruger talked about some of the things you did mechanically. You changed your jump shot quite a bit over the course of time. Who, who worked with you on that? And what did you change? I just, you know, as, when you're trying to fix your jump shot, make it more quicker, you start watching YouTube videos and try to copy the pros who shoot the ball well. And uh, I was working with Coach Henson. And uh, I was in the gym all day, him and Coach Crutch. And uh, we just. Him and Kruger tell me to tuck my elbow in much more, much more uh, 90 degree angles. So I just try to get as close as I can to where I feel comfortable doing it. And I just start working each and every day. And uh, I perfected it. And uh, shots start falling. And, uh, and uh, I have good muscle memory. So once I release it and I'm a feel for where it's at, it's going to go in. Who did you watch on YouTube? I watch all the great shoes like JJ Reddick, Ray Allen, uh, their, their release. I watch Steph, watch Clay. I just start watching all the, the NBA elite shooters. Can we get the jerseys again? Absolutely. Yeah, give me one more photo op. You guys are good. I need to stand up on this one. All right, here we go. <laughs> this is good enough. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Good. Good. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? <laughs> the food, where the food's at? <laughs>